Good morning, students. I hope you all are fine. I am so happy to meet you through this video. I am going to take English class for class 12 poem A Cash on a Tree by Toru Dutt. In the previous video, we saw the first stanza. Now we are going to see the second stanza. Before that, I want to recall the outline, I mean concept of the poem. So here Toru's childhood memories are given in this stanza. Okay, let us go to the second stanza. When my first casement is wide open through at dawn, my eyes delighted on its crest. Sometimes almost in winter on its crest, a grey baboon sits like a statue alone. So here, when my when first my case was here, in this sentence, the word my refers to the poetess Toru Dutt. So at the early morning, the poetess see through his casement. The word casement means window. The word casement means window. Through the window, the poet sees the Kashiruna tree and, his, and all its activities. So, at dawn my eyes delighted on it rest. So, at dawn means here early morning. So, in the early morning time, poet likes to see the Kashiruna tree through a window. At during time, she wants to notice all the activities happening around the Kashiruna tree. So, most of in this text are the poet want to describe the Kashiruna tree and its surroundings. So, here it's an image of it's an image of Kashiruna tree. At dawn my eyes delighted on its rest. So here the word my refers to the poet. So her eyes delighted, her eyes are joyful, are happy to see the Kashiruna tree through the window. The next line says, sometimes and most in winter, on its crest, a grey baboon sits statue lying alone. So here poet notice uh, the happenings happen around the Kashiruna tree. The first one is she noticed in the winter season, most of in the winter season, he noticed a grey baboon sits statue like alone in the Kashiruna tree. So here the word baboon means It's a image of baboon. It is a monkey. Similarly, uh, similarly, it is uh, seen in Asia and Europe. So, a grey baboon sits statue. The word statue means idle. There is no any uh, reaction or there is no any movement for the baboon. So, a grey baboon sits statue like alone. It was sitting in the Kashmir tree alone. And then the next line says, watching the sunrise while on lower boughs. So here, poet notice the action of the Kashmir tree which was sitting like statue, I mean idol. So what it does means, in watching the sunrise at the early morning, here baboon is so happy to see the sunrise. So it is watching the sunrise. During that time, what is happening around the Kashirna tree means here, while on lawyer boughs, but here boughs means branches. The lawyer branches of the Kashirna tree is funny offspring leaf about the unclay. So here is funny. Funny means very weak. Very small and weak. So here a very small and weak refers to its uh, baboon, young one of a 
bad womb. And the word offspring means young ones of all living things. Not only bad womb, young one of all living things. So, in the meantime, the pani having a small and weak bad womb, leap means here jump. So, these bad womb are jumping from branch to branch and playing in the Kashyapina tree. And the next line says, and far and near, Kokilas hailed the day. The next happening, which was noticed by the poet is, and far and near. And the word far means distance, and near means very close. I mean, far to the Kashirna tree and very close to the Kashirna tree. So here what happened means Kokilas came the day. Here the word Kokilas means a type of bird similar to cuckoo. It is an image of Kokila you have seen. Okay, so here what this bird doing means Hail the day. The word hail means greet or welcoming. So at the early morning, the cuckoo bird greet the day and welcoming the day with its sweet and melodious voice. So this was noticed by the poet through the casement and she spent uh, most of time in noticing the Kashirina tree. Okay, the next thing. Unto their pastures when our sleepy cows and in the shadow on the broad tank cast by the bow tree so beautiful and vast the water lilies spring like snow in mast. So the next activity which was noticed by uh, the poet is here unto their pastures. The word pastures means grassland. Now we can see the image. Okay. Pastures means grassland. And the word wind means walk leisurely. So here, unto their pastures, when our sleepy cows here. Uh, the poet noticed the sleepy cows. So here, uh, sleepy cows means we can say some lazy, some inactive cows, which was uh, walking towards the pastures. Pasture means grassland. So it was walking towards the pastures to have their food. And in the shadow, on the broad tank cast. And the next thing, uh, the poet wrote is because the shadow of the Kashyapuna tree, the shadow of the Kashyapuna tree on the broad tank cast near to the Kashyapuna tree, there was a broad tank, I mean a storage of water can be used for uh, drinking uh, by animals. So, here the poet noticed three things and hold the tree so beautiful and vast. Along with the three things, the poet noticed the Kashyapuna tree. The poet loved the Kashyapuna tree because it took a very important role in her childhood life. The water release spring like snow in mast. And the next one is the water release in the storage of water that she noticed the water lilies in the spring season like snow in mass. The word in mass means amazed. It was looking very beautiful. It was looking surprised and it was looking very amazed one. Okay. In this stanza, we have seen three, four activities which was done by the Kashyapuna tree and along with some animals and birds. It was noticed by our poet. Let us recall the concepts. So, the first thing, the first thing is a grey baboon which was sits alone in the Kashyapuna tree while it's funny or playing 
and jumping in the Kashmir tree. The second one, the Kokilas hate the day. And the third one, the sleepy cows walks towards the grassland. And the last one, the water lilies are looking amazed with covered by snow. Okay, let us go to the next time zone. So in this stanza, the poet want to express why she like the cashew in her tree a lot. What is the reason for her loving on the cashew in her tree? So here, but not because of its magnificence. Dear is the cashew in her to my soul. So here she says, here the word magnificence means uh, attractive or impressive we can say. So the cash in the tree is looking very attractive and interactive and impressive to the poet. That's so here he said, but not because of the magnificence she loved the cash in the tree. There is the cash in the to my soul. It is very close, it took a very important role in her life. It took it's considered as a very dear to her soul. So it is not the reason of its significance, but beneath it we have played, though years may roll. In the third line she says, beneath means here under, under the Kashirava tree we have played. So in this sentence, the word we, we refers to, it's a plural one, we refers to here three members. One is uh, Toru and the second one is our younger brother, sorry, elder brother and the third one is our elder sister. These three members were playing beneath the cash in the tree some years back. Though years may roll mean some years back. O oh, sweet companions, loud with love intense. So here uh, Toru says, here, sweet companions means our brother and sister love with love intense the three members are love each other intense means a very strong feeling so in this slide I want to say insist one important thing here Toru and her brother and her sister these two members were uh, suffered with the disease called tuberculosis uh, they lost their life because of this disease. Okay, and, and in that time, Toru wrote this cash in tree on the memory of her brother and her sister. Okay, for your sake shall the tree be ever dear. So here, point says the reason for loving the cash in tree. So what is the reason means? For your sakes, for your means here, our brother and sister. So too they love the cashew nut tree. That's why she also loved the cashew nut tree. Shall the tree be ever dear? She loved the cashew nut tree forever and ever. It's a limitless love on the cashew nut tree for Toru. Blend with your image, it shall arise. Blend with your image, it shall arise in memory till the on tears blind my eyes. So, when she was alone, she used to have a recall all her childhood activities and presented as a poem. So, here he says, in memory till the hot tears. When she had a thought about her childhood life, uh, uh, most of her brother and sister, she had a hot tears blind her eyes. When she thought of her brother and sister, she had a lot of tears. That's why it is called as a hot tears because the tears is filled with uh, feelings and emotions and thoughts. That tears blind her eyes. That's why she said the hot tears blind my eyes. What is that? Dirge like murmur that I hear like the sea breaking on a shingle beach. 
and then in this line the poet asked herself a question and answer herself so what the question here what is the dirge line murmur so here the word dirge means sad the word dirge means very sad like murmur murmur means in a low voice speaking in a very low voice so here she asks she could hear a sad voice she could hear a sad voice like the sea breaking on a shingle beach so the voice looks like a sea breaking on a shingle beach so here the word shingle means the word shingle means rocky stones so the wave from the sea when beats the stones that may have some sound that is called shingle beach the poet hear this sort of sound so what's the reason for that sound she used to ask okay and then she answer herself what's the reason so here it is trees lament not only the poet miss the child miss the childhood but also the kashiruna also miss these three members participation along us that's why this it is called as a trees lament the tree also feel very sad because of missing these three people and airy speech it is an amaze the word airy means amaze it's an amazing speech by the kashirina which is miss the toru and the and the companions that hopping to the unknown land they reach those amaze, amazing speech can reach the unknown land those amazing speech may reach the unknown land so this is the answer for her question herself she answered the question so these are all the important things these are all the important reasons for loving the kashiruna tree by the poet toru okay let us recall the difficult words and important concepts in the third stanza so because of sweet companions she loved the cashew nut tree and the next point is uh, when she had a thought about cashew nut tree her eyes filled with hot tears and the one more important thing is uh, loss of her brothers and sisters and the dirge like murmur she could hear the sound dirge like murmuring from the cashew nut tree that is like a waves that is like a waves and the last one is the lament of the cashew nut tree reach the unknown land reach the unknown land so these are all the important concepts in the second and third stanza and we will see the next stanza in the next video thank you